<laughs> oh no. <laughs> that was recorded too. <laughs> okay. I did not do that. <laughs> Every everybody on Zoom, can you hear me? April Fools, you can hear yeah. me now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. Here's Terry. Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming to the MLS listing input class. Um, appreciate y'all being here. It's an important thing to learn how to do. I'm not sure if you all know how to get to this screen. Everybody in the room know how to get to the screen. Okay. Everybody online know how to get to the screen. Okay, mine might look a little different. You can play around with what this looks like up here. You might have a solid black line, a purple line, whatever. I just like to play around and do spring, so. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, um, first of all, before you enter a listing, you wanna make sure you have all your paperwork and everything ready to go, because there can be mistakes that happen. You wanna verify that all that information, because once you sit down to list, enter your listing, it's a pretty quick process, but if you're, not organized and you don't have your paperwork, then you're like, oh, wait, I don't know that. I gotta put this aside. I gotta look this up. You know, it's, it helps a lot to make sure that you have your paperwork filled out. Also, make sure you have your pictures in a location on your computer so that you know how to access them quickly. Um, you wanna upload 36 pictures is how many pictures that MLS will allow you to um, upload. You wanna upload your 36 best pictures. Do not upload 10 pictures. If you have to take pictures of the front, front entrance sign of the neighborhood, the neighborhood amenities. Um, if it's a room that has a fireplace, zero in and just take a picture of the fireplace. I mean, you want to have 36 pictures because you're going to be um, on the S SEO. You're going to go up to the top of the search when people are searching for you, like on Zillow, Trulia, that kind of thing. So you want to have a, the maximum amount of pictures. Um, so you want to make sure they're in a folder because what, what's going to happen is when you go start entering your listing, you're going to get to a part where you're at your pictures and then you're going to need to upload your pictures. So you need to have them also numbered and we're going to go into that later, but you want to number your pictures in order of the way you want to upload them. So one for first picture, I try to do the best picture of the house. Sometimes it's the front of the house, but if it's a unique property, like a lake property that's got a beautiful sunset view and a dock, you may want to put that as your first picture. Um, if it's got a gorgeous gourmet kitchen, you know, and the front looks the same as everybody else's in the neighborhood, you may want to put that gourmet kitchen on its first picture. Um, just depends on, you know, what the house is. But mostly, for most normal houses that don't have extra features, you're going to do that front picture, the, the cleanest, sharpest picture. Um, you can also have the next picture, another picture of the front of the house as well, backed off, you know, not, you know, up close or, you know, whichever you feel is the best picture of the house. Um, Let's see, if you don't have all the information, let's say you're trying to get your listing in and you find out you don't have all the information, we're gonna save it as a partial and I'll show you how to do that. Um, and then you can get back to it. Um, you always wanna save as you go along, save as a partial, save as a partial. Do not just save because, well, there's some triggers in there that'll keep you from actually saving it and going live. And I'll show you that here in a minute. Um, but so just make sure you're saving as you go along. Um, and once you hit save, you better be ready to go live. When you're completely hitting save and checking off those last two features, you want to make sure that you know that it's going live for good. So, um, so the next part we're going to do is we're going to go to, um, everybody, when you do your paperwork, for those that don't know that have never done a listing, you're going to have your residential input sheets. Okay. And these are the sheets that your clients are going to fill out. Um, and you're going to help them fill them out because sometimes they may not know some of the things and they may not know what their tax map record is, number is. And you're going to find that from the tax records. It's either called a partial ID or a tax, um, tax map number. Um, so this is kind of our guide as we go through and do the listing. So you want to make sure this is all filled out properly. If you have any questions on how to fill this out, if you're with productivity coaching, ask your productivity coach. Ask a fellow agent if you've never filled one out before um, how to fill this out. And there's also um, all the information about the house. You're going to also want to, as far as paperwork ahead of time, there's a section on this MLS paperwork 
that has public remarks, agent remarks, and directions. This is another thing that you kind of want to do ahead of time before you start entering your listing is I usually do it like on a Google sheet because I can get to Google and just copy and paste it right into MLS. If it's on Word, sometimes you're not, you have to flip windows and all that kind of stuff. And then sometimes you have to download just depending on your computer and that kind of thing. So I like to use Google Sheets and then I'll go figure out my public remarks, the agent remarks and the directions. And it's a really good idea and we'll cover this as we get to it. But when you're doing directions, you wanna make directions to the house from the most major road. If there's not an intersection, um, I mean, if there's not an interstate close by, you wanna do a major road and direct them from there. Um, <clears throat> okay, any questions so far? I'm getting ready to go into it. What's that? This is called the residential input sheet. It's part of your compliance paperwork for putting the list in. And there's information, all information about the house, where the bathrooms are, how many bedrooms, how many square feet, everything about the house. It has your information as far as your agent information, our, our brokerage information. And then it has a section that's check all that apply. So it's, it goes through the whole house. And what I recommend is that as you're doing your listing presentation, at least I do, if there's a couple, I usually hand this to one of them and ask them to fill the mark off what they know. And then when I'm walking through the house before it's listed, I'll verify all these items. And if I see something that's missing, then I will go back and add it. Okay, so any other questions? And that was Alton asked um, what this sheet was called. It's called the residential input sheet. I'll try to remember to answer, ask, say the questions that people ask because you may not be able to hear them online. Okay, so to go to a listing, to do a listing up at the top bar, you have a, a little thing called listings. Click on that. And in this case, we're gonna do residential, but if you have any other kind of listings that you wanna put in, lots and acreage, commercial, multifamily, rental, all those things are here. But we're gonna, for this purpose, we're gonna do a, a residential listing. So we're, and as you see right here, it says add a listing. Over here, it says maintain. So if you save one as a partial, you're gonna find it here under partials. Once your listing goes live, you're gonna see it right here under listings. But until it goes live, it won't be there. It's gonna be under partials. So right now we're going to residential. Oh wait, I forgot to step. This is something that not everybody, it won't apply to everyone. Um, if you are on a team or If you were on a team or you would might put something in for someone else, you're not allowed to log, just log in and this, tell somebody to go into your MLS and put it in because you'll get a big fine if somebody finds out about it at MLS. A license agent, <laughs> if you're a license agent, you can put an agent, another agent's listing in. In order to do that, you have to assume their identity. I don't know, has anybody heard of that? Assuming identity? No? Okay, okay. I'll just briefly touch on it. If you want to ask me more about it later, you can. But let's say you're a busy person, you might have a part-time job somewhere else and you don't have time to enter your listing. You might ask another agent, would you take 25 bucks to enter my listing? They'll say, sure, I'd do that for you. So they, they need to allow you access to their MLS. And what this does, it allows you to go in and enter their MLS as them. You're assuming their identity. But MLS knows it's you assuming their identity. So if you make a mistake, they know who made the mistake. It's, they know who entered it. So uh, to do that, you go up to your picture, and this is how you allow somebody to have access. You click on your picture, and under here, it says preferences. If you click preferences, and you see it says user preferences, if you click that drop down arrow, Uh, you go to assume identity. You can add people here and you can only add agents that are in our brokerage in our office in our office. And this is I'm going to show you how you just hit this plus button. It's going to list everybody in our office. You just find their name. Click on their name. Um, 
Gabe, do you mind if I click on your name just for example purposes? Yeah. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, I can search. Okay, so I'm going to click Gabrielle Gilly and see if I can find that bottom line. get to my bar. She's got my screen big so I can see it. Well, anyway, I, I can't see it right now, but over here is a save. You just hit save. And then so get so um, Gabe could actually enter a listing for me. And in, and in order to do that, oh shoot, how do I get out of this room? Did you see the save? Yeah. Okay. So. Well, it went away. But yeah. So so basically, you just sorry about this. That's okay. I just had it here. But anyway, you search for the person, put their name in. Oh wait, I'm not doing that bad. Put their name in. Click on their name. Click save. And so now Gabe Gillies, uh, um, she can do a listing for me. Now, um, if you want to add more people than that, you can. You can add more people. If you're on vacation or you have you want to get something quick or whatever, somebody can enter for you. So to get them off, you just click on their box and hit delete. Okay. Any questions? No, when she opens it up, how does she get to Now I'm gonna show you that. Okay. Yeah. Do you do this every time or just like a one? Like if you have somebody that's going to do it for you often, can you leave them on there? Yeah, you can different? leave them on there. You can leave them in there as long as you want to. As long as you want somebody to be in there, you can leave them in there. If you only want to do a one-time thing, you can leave them in there until they get the job done and take them off. So, yeah. Okay. And then um, in, in order for them, the person assuming your identity, how they get in there, it's the same, pretty much the same steps. Uh, if I can see it, I'm going to go back. You go up here again under your picture, click your name, and above where it says preferences, it's going to say assume identity. It doesn't say that right now because I don't have anybody. But just click on assume identity. It's going to show you that same screen. It's going to show you who, you who is allowing you to do it. They click on the box, and then it's them. They're, they're under you. It looks just like your screen to them. And everything is under you when they enter the list. All right, so let's get back to the listings. I need to make it bigger again. Okay. So we're in listings. Okay, so you see this the main screen. Maybe a little, little bit. For visual purposes, so I can see it, it's a little bigger. You're going to see a little bit more screen than this when you have it, but this is the listing input screen. So the first thing you do is you're going to go to tax autofill. Has ever, anybody ever done that? Okay, this is important because you're looking, you have a tax map number for the house. And if the tax map number is not right, it, you won't know that unless you go here. So go to tax map autofill. And you're gonna put the county. You can just start to type. You don't have to type the whole word. It'll automatically pop up with the blue line. Just click on it. See, it's so, so zero right now because we don't have the tax ID. So you have to have the tax ID to enter it. I'm sorry, how did you get this? Uh, under, under the listing tab, there's a tax autofill button. The I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm not, okay, wait. <clears throat> you found it? Okay. Okay. 
Everybody find it online. What's that? You will have to have the tax ID. That's a requirement of entering the list. What's that? It's not. Not in this section. Well, I tried doing it. I just pulled up one off an address. You just pulled what? I pulled one off. Oh, did you? I tried to enter my address. Or I've always just done the tax ID. Yeah. But if you, I guess you could try to enter the address. I tried to enter my own address and it didn't come up. So, um, but I always just do the tax ID. Yeah, so, yeah, that's what I did. And it's always good to practice with your own address. So, I'm going to put the tax ID in. And I usually just click on the side so it populates. So there's a one there. So then you just hit search. And then there's my property. Is that the correct address? Yes, I'm gonna be listing 105 miles. So I'm gonna click that box. And there's an autofill button right above the line. Do you guys see where that is? <laughs> okay, now what's gonna happen next, you hit that, it's gonna pop up a screen. This is the data it's gonna autofill into your listing. So if there's something on here you don't want it to autofill, you can uncheck the blue box. Where does it get that information? Like tax box? records. So tax records, which we know sometimes are not always correct. But for the most part, if somebody's done some modifications to the home, they've added a room, they've added some, you know, things like that, it may not be correct. Save you steps. It'll save you step. It out of fill some stuff for you. So the address and all that. So it saves a couple minutes of time. Is this a real listing that will be coming? Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> actually, uh, pictures are tomorrow and the skin being clean today. <laughs> yeah, I, I was hoping I could make it live today, but um, it, so she's lead generating right now. <laughs> <laughs> I actually sold this house to him last year and he just changed jobs and he's moving to Ohio. My <laughs> practice is the same. I'm I'm putting a listing in, so this. Oh, perfect. Cool. I'm okay. Right here. Okay. So um, then you just save, and it's going to take you back to your listing page. Uh, Boom. Uh, I don't know if I can go back or not. You okay? Okay. And this is going to be recorded or is being recorded. And I also, anybody that wants it, uh, my I have it like a cheat sheet that I'm walking through. Going to. If you want it, I can give that to you or I can upload it to a Facebook page. If you, especially if you have a, if you're getting a new admin or somebody that's new that you bring as a recruit that you want to help them learn how to put a listing in. Okay, so then, uh, then all things that are listed with a red R are required. You have to put something in that field. Even if it doesn't, if there's nothing there, you can put a zero or you, you know, um, whatever applies to the certain thing. So, there's a little blue hourglass to the right. That's gonna tell you what you can put in that field if you don't know. So you should know because you should have your paperwork already, but it tells you all the different areas. So you can just click on whatever area, but I know the area. So I'm gonna say it's area four. And this is the one gate that I told you about. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so, and then price. Give me 275. And the type, this is another thing. This is going to be a single family home, but if it's something other than that, you just click that hourglass and we'll tell you all the different features. You just, if, it, if you're doing it this way, just click on it and hit save. You can go either way. All right. And then see, it already pre filled the address, so I don't have to fill it up. How do you get to the pre filled address again? That's when the tax record is automatically pre filled. So if you hit autofill when you do the tax records, it should have pre-filled it. If you hit save, if you didn't hit save, it didn't. Okay, I don't have a lot number, but if you were uh, new construction, a lot of times they do lot numbers and addresses or just lot numbers. Um, subdivision, so this is um, public. You can just start typing, you know, automatically. You don't have to type the whole word in. Um, next thing that's important, check for duplication. If it's an expired or withdrawn listing and somebody else might have already got it back on, this is, you might wanna check to make sure it's not still listed. Check for duplicate. There's no duplicate, so we're good. 
You don't want to get in trouble. Or are you going to say, what the heck? You were supposed to withdraw that. Why didn't you? You know? So next thing. It's important. Extremely important for new construction. Validate the map. How many of you have tried to get to a listing that the directions were wrong or you couldn't find it? Sorry. <laughs> not to you, but a lot of new construction is hard to find. Yeah. Or if something's not mapped correctly. So when you click on that map, you can scroll with your mouse or you can plus sign to get closer. That red, the red circle is your thing, is your property. And to move it, you just get the little finger on top of it, click and drag it to wherever it needs to go. So you need to know where it's mapped. Everybody got that? Yeah. No, Mary? No. Yeah, and then it disappeared when I hit someone. Did you click? Yeah. Is everybody good online, hopefully? So to zero in and out to see roads, you can get closer just by scrolling or the plus sign. You've got to kind of find, it's what I do sometimes is go to Google Maps and kind of zero in on Google Maps and then you can kind of see with the crossroads, how many houses in is it, you know, and then go to this and kind of find it. So, and then just hit save. So even though we're not going live, we still, because it's a red R, even if you save it as a partial, you have to have that red R. You're gonna hit active. It won't be active yet. And this is a good time since we're done with the first little block to save as a partial. And I'm gonna show you, I'll wait till. Uh, I got the TMS number in there on uh -huh. the tax record, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to get it to automatically come up. I can't tell if it is or not. Let me just take one peek, but since this is recorded, I need to keep moving, but we can look at it. Okay. Okay, in the status box, you want to put active, even though it's not going to be live right this minute, because the box is a red R, we have to put what it is. Yeah. It's not pending. It's not anything else. These are the choices. Active, on the block, buyer represented sale. Just, I don't know what on the block is. I don't know what on the block I've never dealt with that. I thought on the block was like Nathan had a house and not people. Oh, that could be. Market. Yeah. But he didn't, put it, he didn't put it in after okay. then representing buyer. Okay. I, I, want, I think the buyer represented sales. Yeah, that's for sale by owner. Yeah, I, right. I think on the block is. I don't think we can use it. Uh, yeah, I don't, exactly. for those online on the block, I'm not. We're not sure exactly what that's used for. I've never personally used for, and there's seasoned agents in the room that have never used that. This buyer representative sale. This is when you have a for sale by owner, and you want to get credit in MLS. You're going to have. Um, you're you're going to fill out a buyer representative sales sheet, which is like the MLS input sheet, and you're going to have your buyer sign it. Because when you close, you're going to enter it like a listing, but it's really a sale, so you get credit in MLS for the sale. So that's what that button is. Can I add something on that too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think on the block too for the discussion, there's something called proposed construction. Uh, listing okay very few people do it very few builders do it okay but it's like like if i'm managing a neighborhood mm -hmm. and i've got a home that's going to be like coming soon but right. we haven't poured the foundation yet right you can go propose construction right but the agent has to know to start a proposed construction right Which, by the way it could be a little way to find right soon coming listings um but i think that's what that on the block closes okay. the loop when a proposed construction okay. gotcha that makes sense hey gabe and mary 
just this is for recording this you'll be able to go back and review this later so you don't miss anything going forward i recommend you guys just keep listening and you can always go back and watch that tape as many times as you want so we don't miss anything okay all right so we're going to again save it as an active listing um just so you girls know um i just said we have to put a status in because it's um a red R, and if you hit the hourglass over here, then you only have three choices, active on the block, which we were just discussing, no one ever uses. The other thing is a buyer representative sale, and that's when you're doing a for sale by owner, so you get credit in MLS. So we put active. So we're done with our first little section, just in case the computer goes down, somebody comes in your office, phone rings, you always want to save as a partial. So we're going to save it as a partial. See where it says save. Do not click save. Do not click save listing. Click save partial listing. <laughs> so see, it's processing. And it's going to ask you, do you want to continue the input? Or do you, are you finished? If you got an appointment and you can't get to the rest of it, you can hit finish and come back to it. You want to keep going? Continue input. Everybody what okay? If you, what if you hit? Uh... Finished. Okay, I'm going to show you that too. Good, good question. Um, everybody good with that so far? Everybody know how to partial save? Okay, um, I'm going to show you the partial save if you if you end up leaving the room. Save as a partial. You're gonna. I got an appointment. I got a phone call. I got. Can you get to this right now? You're gonna hit finish. It's gonna. I have another one that's already a partial. It's gonna show it right here as a partial. But let's just say we get out of that. We need to find it. We just got into MLS. Where is it? Where's that info we just put in? So we're going to go to listings. And then instead of adding a new listing, we've already started it. It's over here. It's not a listing yet, right? We're going to go to partials. And here's our Miles Road. That's the one we're working on today. And you just continue where you left off. That section's done. Mm -hmm. Now, it took away that active again. It always does that, just so you know. See where it says status zero, nothing there? Got to put that active back in there. Every time you save a partial, it's going to always take that off. So then we just go to our next drop. <laughs> OK. Is anybody co-listing it with you? If not, then you would put that there. That's on your form. If you have a code list, you would have that filled out already. All right. Now, this is important, especially for a lot of new agents that don't realize what this means or are confused. C-O-M-P-S-B. What is that? What's the most important thing here? Get paid. Yeah. <laughs> commission. So is this the full commission? No. No. No, no, no. This is the commission that only you're giving to the buyer's agent. So if your listing agreement says 6%, 3% to the buyer's agent, three goes there. There's been a lot, I've seen several people that have made a big mistake and they didn't get commission because everything went to the buyer's agent. I don't want that to happen to you guys. <laughs> so, three. Um, you can just type it in. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. So if you do a flat fee, just type. Yeah. You just type in the dollar amount. Yeah. Dollar amount. Yeah. 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 Just type the dollar amount. So. And it's compensation for the selling broker. What the? Yeah. Compensation for the selling broker. Yeah. Thanks, Jennifer. That stands for. Um. So transaction broker accepted. Are you accepting transactions? From a transaction broker, yes or no, you would have to put yes or no. There's a little hourglass if you don't know the answer to that. Why, why wouldn't you? Would you that um, a transaction broker is. I know what it is. But yeah. Just our choice. Then. It's our choice. Your client's yeah. choice. Good Your enough. client's choice. Yep. Um, does everybody in the room know what a transaction broker is, though? Nathan, can you give a full explanation? I know it's it's, yeah. it's just working as a customer. It's a bad idea. Yeah, it's a bad idea. <laughs> they're only they're only working with, as a customer. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Which means you're going to be doing all the work. 
Right. Yeah, that's why some folks, some will say no, they don't compensate at all. Oh. The script, everybody's probably a little different. The script I usually give my seller clients if it's helpful is I kind of briefly describe what transaction brokerage is. I use the example of commercial real estate. It's not a good idea. If one of these folks come, I like to use the term mercenary in their name. May not be the best to record, but it's what I say. Yeah. Um, and I say I'll often end up doing all the work. I don't want to not cast that net to capture a potential buyer from a transaction broker. Right. It's just really difficult and confusing when they do come along because mm -hmm. they dump their buyers and then they just disappear. Right. They get back on their pirate ship and they go. Right. Um, so we're going to compensate them, but I'm not compensating the full amount. Right. I do one percent personally. And mm -hmm. I just tell them that's, that's what I do. I just do one percent. I've never even had one try to approach me ever. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't want to put that. I'm basically doing that. I've seen some people yeah. do that. Yeah. I might be too generous. That's a good idea. So, yeah. Mike, I already, already signed for 1%, so I'm going to put that there. But, um, so, yes and 1. Um, yeah. So then, variable commission. Does anybody know what that box is for? That means if you're if you're willing to reduce your commission, let's say you, you end up getting both sides and you said you'll drop a half a percent if you didn't represent both sides. That means it's variable. Um, so yes, I always put for my brokers, I mean my buyers, my sellers, I'm sorry, both. Um, yes. Now this is not does not have a red R, so you don't have to fill that in. Only boxes that have a red R are required. But I highly recommend as much information as you know, you put in here. It will save you in the long run. It shows up better in the searches. It's showing to other agents that you know your property. It's just, it's just good business to fill in as much property information as possible. I know I appreciate it when I go to show a buyer if the, if the information is in there. So, okay, so this is um, my listing type, which is like all this again, we're following our listing input sheet. So if you don't know any of this information while you're typing it, you need to go back and look at your sheet because all this should be on here and this should just be a guide for you to enter. So exclusive right to sell. That's what we use. Okay. Now, owner name. I never put the full name. I don't know about Jennifer and Nathan. I just put a last name. They look up the tax records. They can see who it is if they're going to write a contract for you. I don't want them knowing my person's name. So I just put a last name. Okay, I never put a phone number in because I don't want anybody calling my buyer, a seller. <laughs> it's not a required field, right? right? So it's blank. Okay, listing date. Now, it's not gonna let you put a date in the future. Just put today, you click that little box. You can click today and whatever your ending date is. I usually do mine for six months. I don't know how you guys do yours, but nowadays it's like six hours. Fire me if I haven't sold it. Right. Right. Hello, put it on Sunday. Oh, that's not good. I will. Okay. Is it foreclosed property? No, I'm gonna put it in because I want people to know it's not foreclosed property. You don't have to put anything there, but I don't. If somebody's doing a detailed search, you want your house to be popping up, right? If it is foreclosure, you want them to know it. So put yes. Is it short sale? If, you, if it is, put yes. If it isn't, put no. Why leave it to guess? Power on? Is it power on or not? It's not a required field? But it's important to know. Yeah. Property disclosure. Is it I mean, yeah. either no or yes? It should be yes. And I know um, a lot of attorneys, or at least uh, Gary Pickman has mentioned recently, I don't know if you guys have listened to Blair Cato's um, podcast, but make sure, especially for people that do flips, they have knowledge of what is going into that house. They didn't say they didn't live there, but they know they have knowledge that they put all these new appliances in the house. I'm, I'd like a, a property disclosure 
I want to know what they've done. I don't know about you guys, but but sometimes that's not the case. They don't, you know, might lose a deal. So you don't want to lose a deal either. You know, if your person's willing to sign the agreement without have seeing a property disclosure. Then, but anyway, property disclosure, yes. Uh, is the property um, disclosure exempt in this case? No. If it was, then you put yes, and that would be no up here. Um, rollback taxes. In this case, it's residential. Um, there's no rollback taxes. Rollback taxes apply usually when it's land being converted to residential. Published to the internet. I would hope so. Yes. <laughs> okay, we're at the next box. I'm going to save it as a partial because we don't want to lose anything. Just a good practice. Continue input. Just keep to where you're at. The only thing that's going to take off is the A for active. And I'm not even going to go back up there and put the A back in right now because I'm just going to keep moving along. It, and when I went to hit, hit the save as partial, it's going to say, wait a minute, you didn't do the A for active for red R. So I'll show you that in a minute. Property information. So you have two choice, you have three choices. You have main square footage, other square footage, and total heated square footage. So sometimes there may be square footage that is not heated and cooled, I believe. Nathan, is that correct? For other footage yeah, like that's usually, heated. Yeah, usually you'll see, um, like on older homes, mm -hmm. you may have a uh, laundry room that's attached on the back. Mm -hmm. So they've got a washer dryer that's in an enclosed space, but right. it doesn't have air running to it, right. so it's not heated. Right. Space. So like Nathan said, I'll bring you online just, just so you can hear that. Um, there may in older homes there may be a uh, laundry room that's heated but not cooled, so they can't count it as total heated and cooled square footage. They would put that space in here, the other heated square feet. Um, go ahead. Sorry, you wouldn't put it in other heated square feet. Okay. I gave an example of unheated. Square oh, feet. unheated. Okay. Like the garage could be. Oh, okay. Feet. Okay. Usually the other heated square feet, like it says main structure. Mm -hmm. Other heated would be like say I've got Separate a building. detached. Garage okay. With an okay. On top. okay. Okay. Right. 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 Okay. So other heated square feet is like um, if there's a garage with an apartment above it or uh, heated square feet, and it, separate from the main structure, that's where that would go. Could that possibly include a basement? Um, you can only get to it from going back outside. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Right. You can good get to Yeah. Good question. Part of the main structure. Good question. So I'm going to put a zero because I don't have any additional square footage. Um, just. FYI on square footage, and I'm sure you guys have all heard this before, but for newer agents, just make sure you're not going by the tax records. Make sure you can verify square footage. Make sure that um, either your client has an old appraisal that has square footage verified or have somebody measure $75. It could be to your client's benefit. If someone didn't measure that house, it could have more square footage and they could make more money, have less, but you might get in trouble because you're listing it having more. So you want to, your license is on the line. I mean, it's worth the 75 bucks. Can I make a suggestion? Absolutely. As a new agent, new agents in the room, I would make that part of your listing presentation mm -hmm. to differentiate yourself right. from others. Yes. Um, a lot of agents don't spend that money. Right. Um, so just one more thing in your toolkit and say, hey, I go the extra mile, I measure. And you'll gain confidence because you'll learn over time. Right. Kind of have a good, good idea, a good feel for right. what, what size home you and there's people that like um, uh, Dana Jacobs who has come to a couple of our events. She just does measuring. Uh, some appraisers will do it, um, just measure for you. But what's nice is they give you a floor plan too, which you can upload to your listing. And then it has the square footage. So, um, you know, whether you pay for the 75, you might be able to get your seller to pay for it if they don't have something to document their square footage. You know, that's between you and your client. Yeah, that's her. Yeah, yeah, that's her. Yeah, that's her. So anyway, square footage is very important. You just don't want to go by the tax records. You know, just it's, it's important, you know. Okay, so is this um, this this other information has already been pre-filled. Um, the number of bedrooms, stories, and year built from the tax records when we did the auto fill. So this is not a new home. This is a resale. Uh, number of fireplaces. So it's a required field. If there are no fireplaces, we put a zero. This one has a fireplace. Garage spaces. If it doesn't have a garage, we put zero because it's a required field. How about if it's a carpool? 
a carport. Yeah, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, because right here we're in garage type. Okay. And you're going to put what kind of type of garage it is. So you're going to click the hourglass. It has all the different types and carport is in here. Mine's correct. Attach. Oh, yeah, carport right there at the top. It's hard for me to see you in this. Okay, so you can or you don't have to put parking spaces. Sometimes I don't because I don't exactly know how many parking spaces are in the driveway. I mean, some people, if they have like a bunch of smart cars, maybe they could fit a lot more than <laughs> got a big old truck. You know, I don't know. I don't know. That's a good one though. If you don't have a garage, like if you yeah. have no garage, and yeah, have a long driveway, right? That's good to know. Yeah, that's good to know. If you have a long garage, I mean a long driveway, but no garage, great, that's excellent, Nathan. Um, garage level, I just put main, just because, oops, because it is a main. I mean, you really don't have to put anything there. Is there a pool on the property? I always put no, but like again, you don't have to put anything there if you don't want to. Okay, when we get here. This is full baths um, in the basement. Well, this one doesn't have basement. Lower level, this doesn't have a lower level. This is the main level. I have um, one, I have a half bath. I don't have a full bath on the main level. So I'm gonna put a zero because I don't have a full bath on the main level. Okay, so full bath, second level, I have two. So I have two full baths on the second level, but I don't have any on the first level. But I have a half bath on the main level. So down here is half bath and that's required. I have one. So I have no other half baths. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Good question for you. Yeah. You know, we have an option of full or half. Yeah. Yeah, here we don't. Yeah, we don't know. Mm -hmm. They don't have so to be a full. What's that? With a shower only? If it has a shower or a tub, then it's considered full. Okay. Right. If it's just a toilet and a sink, it's a half. Good question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I've got got a formal living room on the main floor, and here we're putting what floor it's on. So if you don't, if you're not sure what goes in that space, you can hit this little class again. It tells what level what level is this room on. So I've got a formal living room, formal dining room. Um, great room. Okay, kitchen. Kitchen's on the main floor. Even though it's not a red field, wouldn't you want to know where your kitchen is? Uh, believe it or not, uh, there's um, when I first got in the business, I was with Russell and Jeffco, and there was a house that the kitchen was on the in the, in the lower level. I was like, that's interesting. <laughs> but they wanted the, the lake. They they came in and out of the lake, and that's where they wanted they built their kitchen. On. So anyway, um, okay, washer and dryer thing. Sometimes it's upstairs. Um, master bedroom. This one happens to be on the second floor. So you can either put a two or S and it'll pull up that line. Mm -hmm. And the second bedroom is on the second floor also. Again, I'm just typing S. All three of these are upstairs. No more, there's no other bedrooms on the fourth, fifth, and sixth, no bedrooms. We're at that blue line. I like to hit partial save. Again, it's just good practice in case you get distracted. You don't want to have to go back and enter all the stuff again, believe me. <laughs> oh, you know what? It didn't trigger me with the A. Yeah, I didn't go back and put that A in, but it didn't say I had to. 
Now, if you were saving for good and didn't have that red R in, then it would trigger it. Okay, school, school information. In this section, what's important, please verify your schools before you enter. My guy, he's only lived there a year. He doesn't have any kids in school. School zones are changing. So they've started adding it to the tax record. Yeah. Oh, have they? No, I didn't notice that. It'll list on the tax record. Oh, that it should tell you what to do. Jennifer okay. said they that's started adding. Like yeah, that's awesome. Jennifer said they started adding um, the school records to the tax record. So that's that's awesome. What I do is I go to the school district website, um, if it, especially if they're not open when I'm doing it, and I will just search for this um, school zone locator or the bus route. So some, some districts, it's the bus route. And you type in the address, and it'll give it the school. And then I print that page, so I verify how I got that information, especially if you're not able to get a hold of the schools, if there's some discrepancy. So like school. School. Yeah, or bus route, depending on which district. Some districts don't have that. School zone locator on the district district, district websites like Lexington Richland 5, Richland 1, Lexington 1, whatever district, school district they're in. They should know the school district number. They don't know the schools for sure. But. Oh, so that means I would have already done that because right now I'm at the school district and I did the drop down. Uh -huh. but uh, this is not going to help me find the school. Is it? No. If, that is, I think they've already gone to school zone located. Okay, right. So I know what. Yeah, so know that before. Out. Like I said, that's part of your paperwork before you start listening. Mm -hmm. That should be on your paperwork. I just want to make sure to make a note because actually, when I first started in the business, that was another thing that's important. Um, there was a listing that I got when I first went in the business. The other agent was tend to be more seasoned than me. I got the listing because I was a newbie and I was just really trying to, you know, hustle it. And he, they didn't have the right schools, and it was in a good school district, and they didn't have it in a good school district. They assumed they went by what their seller had, and I sold it. And you got to be careful in Morris Acres area. Yeah, yeah, they, exactly. They don't play about those schools. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. yeah. So it could make or break your <laughs> listing, you know, if you don't have the information right. Yeah, that was exactly. Yeah, yes. the district five area. Yes. You can't go off the old list and standards. Right. Mm -hmm. Which might have been I didn't have that. I think it's original one. Oh, no, it's not. It's original two. See, I wasn't, I didn't have my checkbox marked. So all the ones with the red R's are required. Some schools like Chapin has uh, intermediate schools. And they also have school choice like in Lexington Richland 5. So I don't know if a lot of you know about Lexington Richland 5 schools, but they do have some school choice if there's availability and they have to apply for it. So there is some stuff about school choice down here. All right, so blue line. Is partial. Continue input. Just keep rolling along. Anybody have any questions? I know this kind of data entry, it's not super exciting, but <laughs> <laughs> just trying to hit some high points as we go. Okay, this, this is not on the lake, but it doesn't necessarily have to be on Lake Murray. It could be on a pond. Water frontage number here, that's what, how much water frontage. And you usually get that from the plat. The plat will say how much water frontage it has. But um, this, this particular house does not have um, water frontage. All right, so this is where your HOA fee goes. Mm -hmm. And what the HOA fee is for, this is for a year. Um, and the HOA name, if you have it. I don't have a contact number, so that's all I have. Before I put it in, I'll probably look that up and see. I try to put as much information, like I said, as I can here. Um, but since I'm not going live with this today, I don't, I don't have that number here. All right. Um, 
I'm not going to go ahead and save it again because this is the only two items I've put in here. When you do, once you put your pictures in, the um, circle picks is um, something that this comes with our office. It will automatically generate a virtual tour and it will automatically go to that button right there that says virtual tour. So when you, after you go live, it takes a couple days or a couple hours, it just depends on when you enter your listing. It will show up under virtual tour. So we already have them. You already have, yeah, you already have under contract by then. But if you wanted to put a virtual tour in, um, that's later after you put your listing. Um, okay, here's remarks. So what I did, let me get to it. Oh, look at all the noodles. So I have a Google Sheet with all my remarks. So I just copy it and paste. Oh wait, that's how to do this class. Bear with me. I did everything in Google Drive. I try to put it in several folders for everything. So, you think you already have this typed up? Mm -hmm. right. Yes, I have a type up on a Google Sheet. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? I don't think it's not in here. Oh, maybe it is. I could have just gone through the sheets. There it is. So, Google Sheets. So, these are my directions, these are my agent remarks, and these are my remarks. The, the directions are separate somehow. Directions are separate, agent remarks are separate, and okay. remarks. And I can't remember which section we were on. I think we were on remarks. I'm just gonna copy this. Yeah. Let's copy it. Right click. And then go to your listing. Right click. Paste. Boom. Then you don't have to sit and type it there. And you already did thought about it before you started your listing. Major remarks. Terry, yeah. you mentioned maybe two or three things that you always put in your remark or excuse me, that you include in your remark. So if you're thinking through one of the remarks for each column mm -hmm. with a different property. Right. Um, what are two or three things that you always include? Um, the public remarks, I usually try to include any, I mean, I usually talk to the seller if I'm not familiar with the area. I ask them, you know, what they love about the house, what they love about the area, what they love about the neighborhood. I talk about what things that are positive that would draw attention to the property. And the more information, the better. If you just put, you know, one line, that's it. I mean, that doesn't get anybody excited about it. You know, try to describe, be descriptive um, without, you know, exaggerating. You know, um, read a book on the rocking chair front porch or something. You know, just, you know, it doesn't have to be crazy. Is there something good that the house provides? It's not yeah. really a feature to check the box. In right. The input. Right. You know, maybe that's what you tell them about it. Like, it's got a brand new degree. It's got a brand new HVAC. Really just looking at the listing, they're not going to know that. Mm -hmm. So, in the remarks, is a good place to go. Good point. Or the house is simple, isn't it? Right. Or anything that there's not really. Or upgrades. Or upgrades. Or, yeah. Especially, like, put it there. Right. 
So basically, you guys get the idea. Um, and then agent marks. I try to, anything that I think the agent might want to know. In this case, um, I want them to schedule through showing time because I love showing time. If you've never, yeah, it's awesome. If you haven't learned showing time, definitely go learn showing time. That, that's going to be another class. I'm sure that we'll probably do another class on showing time itself. There's lots of tutorials in there they, that will help you how to do it. And I'll show you a glimpse of, of one. Once we get to the end, I'm going to show you a listing that I already have live because I'm not going to make this one live, but just to kind of show you. But you can set your client up on it and um, they can approve showings without, you know, you'll see when somebody wants a showing, your client will also be able to just say accept. That way you're not having to take the call, call them, da, da, da. you're busy. You can see that they accepted. If not, then you can set Makes it easy. If you got somebody um, staying in the house, how do you normally know set that up? She, they're, showing there, huh? they're showing time. They're showing time. You can awesome. say that appointment required. Mm -hmm. How many? It asks you how much lead weight they need. You know that just depends on what your seller wants. So anyway, um, these are the directions. Again, you just try to get the directions from a main highway or interstate. Or the prettiest way. Or the, the prettiest way to the house. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 That's a really good point. Yeah, sometimes it's better to yeah. a long way for better. Yeah, right. But for people that are coming from a distance, they're going to be coming a main highway or an interstate. So it's the prettiest way off of the main highway. So we say the end partial. Now we're talking about features. So what kind of style is it? Is required? Exteriors required? Foundations required? Um, so the traditional home. The uh, Exterior is all brick. Brick on all sides. Foundation is crawl. And it's going to make you put a space there, either slab or crawl. Um, is it water frontage? If it is, then you're going to want to put what kind of water frontage it is. And if you don't know the options, you check this little glass over here. Um, some people in certain countries like to know which way the house faces because in their culture, it might make a difference. So, it's good for gardening, too. Yeah. It's good for what's like in yeah. Carolina, South Carolina. If you're in South right. Carolina, you got a back porch that's facing west mm -hmm. in the afternoon, you want to be on it. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's important to some people. Like I said, if you know, put it in there. The more information, the better. Because if they're searching, putting a filter, and they're looking for a house that faced east or a house that faced west or whatever they're looking for, if yours is the only one that has what where it's facing, boom, you're going to be the first one they see. Um, I'm going to use my house for example. Yeah. I want to. So I live in Riverwalk, mm -hmm. and many of the homes in Riverwalk are, um, I guess, some people would call it split level. Mm -hmm. Because when you walk in, you know, and you have the rooms upstairs, right? Um, space downstairs. Right. I don't see what split level is a, is an option. So, it's a lower level when you're talking levels. Yeah, so we've got low, that lower level. It's not a basement, right? Because you can go outside from it. Well, outside from it. Yeah, so it's considered lower level. So it's right, just a lower level, yeah. a main level, and an upper level. Mm -hmm. And then to um so to this um style feature mm -hmm. of the home. Oh uh -huh. the type of the stick. I wouldn't be putting bi level. Um, I wouldn't be putting I'm trying to think where we're yeah, home. there's different options. options. You click the little glass and you find which one that fits the best. Um so there's a try also. Yeah. So if it has three levels, that would be a try. Mm -hmm. Try level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can also Google it. I Google everything. <laughs> what if I have a, this list, this, and this? What kind of house is that? <laughs> you don't know. Or ask. <laughs> Google is my friend. 
I'm not getting paid for that, by the way. <laughs> uh, okay, water frontage type, house spaces, location. Uh, location is talking about if it's on a cul-de-sac, is it on a golf course? Uh, is it on the water? It's on a corner. Some people like that it's in a cul-de-sac. You don't have traffic. Some people like that it's on a corner. They got a little bit more of a premium lot. It's on water. Make sure you're marking all these things so that your house stands out, even though it is not a required field. Exterior. These are all the different things that are happening on the outside. Um, I have a screened in porch on this one. Um, I have a fence, I can find it. Oh, fence is next. Uh, gotta double check on the gutters. Okay, as of right now, I just have a screened in porch and oh, I have sprinklers. And I have sprinklers. So go back to your little sprinklers. But when you have a bunch of things that are outside, you can just click, 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 click them all in one spot. You don't have to keep adding. There's a gutter right there. Well, yeah, I gotta verify. I can't remember if there's gutters or not. I need to double check on that one. Um, all right, fencing. When he bought it, it didn't have a fence, but now it does. So it's partial brick and iron. And it has lots of fencing options. If there's a front fence, a back fence. Um, It's not privacy only. Only. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So that's fencing. And the road type is it paved? Is it not paved? Are you not sure what the different types are? You can click the button again. This one's paved. Is it a dirt road? Is it a private maintenance road? Okay, this is talking about the features. Um, we're at the interior of the house now. Like, what are the features in each of these rooms that we're looking for? Let's see what we got. All right. So formal dining room. Um, I've got high ceilings. So ceilings high. Um, floors are hardwood. So you just kind of go through your list that you got checked and just check all the boxes that apply and then hit save. Ooh, formal living room. My guy's using it as an office right now. He's not using it as a formal living room, but I'm gonna still count it as a formal living room because somebody else may use it as a formal living room. Mm -hmm. So again, ceilings high. Um, that's sort of the thing that you're talking about. Give the remarks that you can offer that. Yeah. Like, yep. Or it's hardwood. That's going to be the living room or both office. Right. That way, it's made it like, especially nowadays, they specifically want an office. Mm -hmm. Give them an option. That's yeah. They can make an office, another big work. Jennifer had a good point for those that you are online. Um, she said in, that in their remarks is where you can put um, if you're using a room that says something different that. A uh, formal living room could be used as an office or whatever the case may be. All right. And anyway, as you can go, as you go along, you just put all the different features um, of what's happening in that room. Did you have a question, Alvin? No. Okay, I'm sorry. Now, do you use great room or living room? That's the thing, like the family. I, I think that's a functional difference. A living room is a formal. You have there, a formal a, living room and a formal there, dining room. You have formal and living room. Yeah, you have both. Yeah. I that's use gray room. I mean, yeah, it depends I, on the house. I don't but. know if there's a right way or wrong way. Yeah. Me personally, if it's really big, I call it a great room. Yeah. If it's not really big, 
Great room tends yeah. to not have divine yeah. walls between. Right. Between yeah. Room. Great room tends to be more of an open. Formal. Tends to be. Maybe yeah. even open to the kitchen. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Right. You just have like a whole one level. Right. Formal formal living room versus the living room where you want. Does you mean you have more? Than <laughs> the one is formal, but somewhere there's an extra. I think I use great room for all of those. <laughs> and not formal, but for yeah. all the love. I was just yeah, I see, I and, and it was previously listed as a great room, so I, I, I tend to not just. I sometimes if it's listed before as a great room, I list it I as a great room. It's motto. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Get in trouble for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. unless yeah. somebody's like. It's great. Could be great to somebody, not somebody else. <laughs> right. Exactly. Great is relative. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's better than an apartment. It's great. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I forgot the fireplace. Fireplace. <laughs> All right. So I'll just go back. I'm not going to be nitpicky about every little thing because I'm going to go back anyway and finish this up later. But just uh, in essence of time. So kitchen. So we got options in the kitchen. Um, you're looking at um, whether it has, what type of backsplash it has, if it has a backsplash, does it, what kind of cabinets are there in the house? Are they painted? Are they natural? Um, are they stained? Is there a ceiling fan? Are there countertops? What kind of countertops are they? Are they granite? Are they for mica? It's asking all, all those different questions. Again, this should be checked off on your sheet before you start your listing. So. My guy has painted cabinets. And he has quartz countertops. Nathan, what's your rule of thumb and Jennifer, since you guys are experienced? What if you don't know what kind of it is? Countertop? Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's another option. Yeah, other. <laughs> you don't know. I would leave it blank. You could just say you don't know. You don't yeah. Know. I, right. There is. You're saying I, if I don't know and they don't know, right. I just won't make a comment. I right. Would say. Um, Most people are pretty picky, so if you tell them it's one thing. Yeah. Not, exactly. You, you, you don't want to overstate it. if you don't know for sure. Exactly. Yeah. So if it's if it's not a required field, that yeah. I don't know and they don't. I, yeah. I leave it blank. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is. Right now, there's like five listings in town. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Six this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Yours will be seven. Um, right. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but in a more balanced market, like all of this is super, is very important. Yeah. But it plays a more important role. I feel like in a balanced market, yeah, where you really, really, yes, there's more competition. Absolutely. Um, so. Absolutely. Like some of these, getting I found. I kind of cut my teeth in a in a buyer's market mm -hmm. where like you had the mm -hmm. is a complete opposite of what we have now. Yes. And you wanted all of this filled out because you never right. knew that one search they might be looking yeah. for right. that would make you show up. Right. So, right. Speaking it's kind of not to argue with you, but speaking as a, someone that takes buyers around, even in this type of market, when you have to go the day a house goes on the market, if you know your client only wants granite countertops, right. and it's not on the yeah, it's wasting my point. time. So yeah, it's very helpful true. as a listing agent yeah. to put as much as you can because it saves us a whole lot of effort because yeah, we know what our clients want and don't want. And if mm -hmm. I see it's got for well, Micah countertops, they ain't never going to go for that. Mm -hmm. I'm not wasting my time, right? You know, so just another point. Yeah, that's a good Sorry. point. Yeah, thank yeah, you, Kim. That was, that was good. Is good. Good information. So Nathan was saying in this market, we may not necessarily have to have every detail, but which is a good point um, because they're going so quickly. But in a buyer's market, you definitely want to have all the detail because they're going to be filtering being selective. So, okay. So uh, freestanding, uh, the range, you have to put that, that is a separate column from the kitchen. That's the section I just put in. Equipment is talking about whether it has a dishwasher, a disposal, if, is the washer and dryer staying? Um, is the refrigerator staying? Is there a microwave above the stove? Now be careful on this. Make sure that your client has authorized you to list the refrigerator, the washer, and the dryer if they're listing, because otherwise you will be buying a refrigerator, washer, and dryer out of your commission. <laughs> so 
Sometimes those are negotiable. Don't mark them if they are. Let them ask for it. Let them, you know, make a higher offer. So it's important to list only the equipment that is staying. All right. Any other questions or thoughts while I'm clicking? My guy doesn't want to leave the refrigerator. He wants to make it. Also in here is where you put your tankless hot water heater. Okay, laundry. Where's the laundry room located? Where, do, where is the laundry placed? So you want to know where that is. Is it in a closet? Um, is it on a porch? Is it, you know, where is that location of that laundry room? Mine's in the kitchen in the closet. Um, okay, other rooms, this is where you have an opportunity to put some other rooms that might be in the home that weren't, didn't have a category above. And in a section there, it says other rooms that you marked previously. This is where you would put what, where those rooms are. Is there an unfinished basement? I mean, a bonus room, um, a um, enclosed garage, is there an exercise room, a sunroom, that kind of thing. All those things are here. You click all the ones that apply. My guy doesn't have any other extra rooms. Um, master bedroom. So what's what are the features in the master bedroom? Um, it's got a bath that's private. It's got a ceiling fan. So you want to mark all the things, features that are in that room. Like I said, you want to have your client fill this out or, and you follow up behind them and make sure that all the boxes are checked when you're doing the listing appointment or when you're taking pictures, it's another good time to do those things. And if you can't remember when you get your picture, look through your pictures. That's what I do sometimes if I forgot to look, see if there was a ceiling fan or something like that, you know? Or if you're listing, if you're listing for someone else, and you're on a team, and your superior agent didn't mark all the things on the box, and you're trying to figure it out, then that's another place where you're looking at pictures and things to help you solve the puzzle. Did I rephrase that? Do you need at least ten pictures? You want thirty-six. You want thirty-six. I'm not doing this first. You find this is the best. Don't have. No, okay. I don't have. Got you. You put as many pictures as you put as many pictures as you can. You put as many pictures as you can, Mary. Yeah. As many pictures as you can. Yeah, you can come up with 36. Yeah. It's too dark. So many times. Yeah. Okay. Well, in that case, in that kind of a situation. Yeah. You put as many as you can. Yeah. But you also don't want them calling and say, what is the help? You know, you know it's an investment opportunity. Take you know, you don't want them calling you every minute either. Put as many as you can. Right. Because some investors want those money information, even bad information. Yeah, exactly. If yeah. I see bad stuff, I get more excited. So right. Yeah. 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 You know, they could get a better deal, deal, right? Yeah. 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 That's, a, that's a good point. Yeah. Because we're on a picture thing. Yeah. My thing is going to be at this house. Yeah. So we're not going to fix anything. Oh, right. So it kind of stopped yeah. my mind. You know, I take that picture of yeah. the floor that you can fix it. That's, that's what I'm trying to draw in the first right. place. Right. So right. Can yeah. we still say 36 pictures for that? Um, if you can, I mean, I, mean, I don't be, know. They're going to be, they're going to tell that house, it's going to show what it is. If it's in really bad shape, maybe, but I, I don't know. I I try to show it in the best light as possible, especially if it's in really rough. I, I know, it's, 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 it's not horrible. Yeah. I would show the best pictures. I would show the best pictures in that case. Yeah. yeah, in that case, I wouldn't. I'm talking for about a home that's not like doesn't is not an as is it might have some issues. Yeah. I beg the guy just put twenty thousand into it. Yeah. Right. Sixty out for that. Right. Nope. So like it is. Right. I had the money I'd buy to do it myself. Yeah, and that people think I would just say the best. Yeah. Show the things in the best light. That's a good house. I love it. It's great. Yeah. I buy all. It's a good thing. You're showing like great. Right. Right. Those are good things to get because somebody knows all the Right, structure. Yeah. yeah. So even if it's messed up, just show the good structure for it. That's a good point, Tiffany. Good point. Yeah. You are probably Yes. My client talked a lot. Well, I'll go back and get some more detail later. We'll move along. <laughs> okay.
we'll be right along. Let's see. Um, okay, so anyway, we, we got the point on the features, right? Same thing here, bedrooms, mark the features. I'm, I'm going to skip along here because this is kind of like tedious and you guys don't need to see, didn't see any technical boxes. But um, we'll move on to the next um, basement. It's a required field. Is there a basement? Yes or no? No. Okay, lower level. So this would be your case in your house by the tri level. That'd be mm -hmm. that lower level there. Mm -hmm. uh, fireplace. What kind of fireplace is it? Is it gas? Is it um, logs? This happens to be wood burning. Is it a wood stove? That would go there too. Mm -hmm. Kind of floors are in the house. So is there carpet, tile? You list everything in the house. Carpet, tile, wood floors. Whatever type of floors you got. Again, if you're not sure of the different, you can check this. Little, all, the all the different type of floors throughout the house. Yeah. So there's already all your options right there. Again, that's a required field. So interior, we're talking about um, attic access, pull down, attic storage, bookcases, ceiling fans, um, central vacuum, there might be one of those, garage openers, um, intercom system. This house actually has an intercom system, but it doesn't work. <laughs> so, so we are disclosing that, that it doesn't work. <laughs> doesn't use it. Um, smoke detectors. All those kind of things are in that section. And it's important to mark some of those, even though it's not a required field, it's good to check. Again, if you don't know, just check this little circle over here, sour glass or the spy glass, whatever you want to call it. Um, handicap, are, is it handicap accessible? Are there handicap bathrooms? Is there an elevator? Any kind of handicap things that you know for sure, you make sure you mark those. There, those people that, that are looking for those features, re that's really important that those are marked because they, those are hard to find. Energy, energy efficient. Um, attic fan, is there an attic fan? Does it have a good sense rating? Is it, does it have solar panels? Um, does it have store windows or thermal pane windows? Have the windows been updated? You mark that there. Heating, so you're gonna mark what type of heating and cooling it is. And if you don't know, and you know it's central, mark central, right? I mean, they, they, hopefully the seller knows. You'll definitely know once they do a home inspection, but for the most part, some people don't know. And if it's central, then we just mark central. Whatever, whatever you you know, you know, you put. Um, this one happens to be a gas and a heat pump on the second level. I'm not an HVAC person, so I'm not real keen on all that stuff. <laughs> so you put in what you know or what your client knows, and if you don't know, don't put it in there. Cooling, same thing. All right. Um, green construction, does it have any green features? Does it have any Energy Star appliances? Has it got any um, ratings to make it green? And that's where you would put those items. Again, you can check this over here, the search, and find out what kind of things qualify for that. Water, it's a required field. Is it public? Is it lake drawn? Is it community? The, the, the seller should be telling you that because they should have it on their property disclosure what kind of water it is. And if they don't have a property disclosure, they're paying a water bill. So they should be able, if they're not paying a water bill, then they have a well. <laughs> All right. Miscellaneous. We're getting close to the end, guys. Hey, thanks for hanging in there. <laughs> oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, you're welcome, yeah, of course. Um, let's see, miscellaneous. And here you're going to have things like, do they have built-ins? 
Um, do you know if there's cable TV available? Is there a community pool? Um, is, there a golf, is it a golf community? In this case, this is a golf community and there's a community pool. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, 400 of it is to because they bought the, they are part owners of the clubhouse or of that now. Yeah. So 400 of it a year is for the swimming pool, the playground, and their building splash pad. Mm -hmm. And the other 400 is for maintenance, street lights, all that. Okay. And the association of feet includes those things I was just talking about. So what are the things that are featured, you know, included in here? Um, check with your seller, but also check with the HOA. Make sure you're getting the HOA covenants, restrictions, bylaws, you know, all those things. You want to attach those in your documents, which I'm going to show you here shortly. So, <laughs> yeah, I know it's it's a, it's work up front, but in the long run, it's it's just yeah, you know, it sounds crazy, but. It is a buyer's agent's due diligence, but don't you want the transaction to go smooth? I know I do. I'm getting near it. Okay. Yeah. I'll just go back and see. What's going on. Okay. So scrolling down, association fee includes, and you said that available financing. This is where you would put what kind of financing. If you have a a foreclosure or something like that, it may not qualify for FHA or VA because there's big damage to the house. It may only qualify for cash or conventional. You know, so that's where you would put the terms here. What what would your person allow? So these are all the different options. Let me just save it and then. Possession is a required field. Most of us do on um, debt closing. Can I go back a second and ask you a question? Sure. For the available financing, you know, we got USDA house, mm -hmm. and I've, I've heard the line quite fluctuates. Mm -hmm. Would you put USDA housing in your, in your listing? Or um, you know what? I don't you? know. It does have rural. Yeah, there is a website you can go to. It's called it's USDA, USDA Rural Eligibility. But now, but I, I, you know that line fluctuates at times. You yeah. want to be held liable on the business that fluctuates while you got a list. Just I would just put in the agent remarks that it needs to be verified. Yeah, the agent needs to be verified. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the other thing is, is I would just like just like the schools down here in the schools. I print that page. I print it. It shows eligible and it has that address, and I put it in the documents. <laughs> so that's. You know, CYA. When they move in, they get possession of the house at closing. Oh, okay. This if is I where there's somebody in the house, I don't need to put that. No, no, this is about when they, this is at closing. Who owns the house at closing? Who's going to be in living in the house at closing? The room. But it's, I don't okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. If you were to pick the USDA rural, that's that last spot of rural housing eligible. And there, like I said, there is a website where you can verify that. And I would put type in the address, it'll show, and it'll say eligible, print that page. Just save it. It's a good thing to have. So that's why you've marked it that way is because you saw it that way. I'm gonna put possession and closing. Yeah, that's that's yeah. what most of us do. I would recommend putting that in there, and that might be something you negotiate later, if, if somebody wants needs to stay in there for a few days. Mm -hmm. I would I would put at closing, unless your client has something different to do there. Okay, this is where you put your showing instructions. So that nobody will read. That nobody will read. <laughs> <laughs> um, whether they need an appointment, this is what where showing time comes in handy when you report and tell them to. Go through mm -hmm. showing time. Um, whether they need an appointment, do they call the agent? Do they call the owner? Do they call, um, well, those are tenants, but lockbox, key in the office, whatever the information is. In this case, I do have a lockbox. 
Um, it, I have to put a special sign in this particular neighborhood. It's a little tiny sign. Some neighborhoods, you can't put your regular sign in. Some neighborhood, their HOA, they don't let you put sign in the yard. You might have to put your sign in a window. Like my one listing I have right now, the one under contract, I had to put the sign in a window. You couldn't even put it in the yard. Um, some like this one, you have to buy a special little sign. I know in Wildwood or or Lake Carolina, you have to Lake Ward. There's certain certain neighborhoods you might have to buy a special sign for. So just check to make sure with the HOA what signings allowed. But you would mark on this section. Um, what and I'm going to put showing time because that's how I want people to know. My person's in and out because they're in the middle of moving, so I'm not going to put vacant. Um, there is a sign, even though it's tiny. Anyway, so those are some of the features there about the showings. And then this is where you have to put the lockbox number. You have to put the lockbox number, which is on the side of the lockbox. So um, take a picture of it before you put it on the house because you're going to forget. <laughs> Unless you hit it and then you can look back on your email and say, when I hit that lockbox. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so put it on your paperwork. <laughs> so when you're doing your listing, You'll have it all your information. And you don't have to put the shopper code. I don't know why you would have to put that there. Unless for, but MLS knows how to get in here if there's a right. I mean, but then you're telling every other builder yeah. how to get into your lock. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So all right. So we're all the way at the end. We're gonna move to the next little section. I'm gonna hear save as partial right now. And this next couple sections will go pretty quickly. So hopefully we're not, we're pretty good on time here, I think. Any questions right now until we move to the next part? All right. There's two ways you can get to the next section. You can go next. It's going to take you to photos. I like to upload all my photos at once. Like I said, if you have all your stuff already, you have them in a folder on your computer, if you have a number, they're going to go boom real fast in here. So just okay. So to upload multiple, there's a little button right here that says upload multiple. Okay. Everybody with me? Now, hopefully it will let me find my computer on here. And you're going to click on that upload multiple, add files, and hopefully it'll be able to see my Gmail. Hmm, I might not be able to do this. Darn it. Well, I'm going to show you guys in another screen. But basically what you do is you click on add files and then you're going to, you hit that, it's going to go to your computer. So wherever you save your pictures on your computer, that's where it's going to go. Mm -hmm. This isn't letting me get into my Google because I'm on the office computer. I apologize for that. Um, so once, once you hit all the pictures, click upload, you hit this start upload. It's not letting me get to my pictures, unfortunately. So because I have my Google Drive and it's not letting me because this is the office computer. But um, once you click add files, you click all the photos and hit upload and boom, all of them will be in there at once. Okay. And then once the picture's in there, you're gonna, you can put some detail about each picture. So when they show up on a listing, it can say beautiful living room or whatever you want to say about that particular room and picture. If there's certain features that you want to stand out, you can add a little 
comment. I'll show you that on my next listing. That's live right now, or that's live right now. It's pending, but just kind of see what that looks like. But for all intents and purpose, purposes, we'll just move along. Uh, but that's how you do that. Just go hit upload, find the pictures on your computer, files, and upload. And they all come in here at once. You got to click on all the pictures. Okay. And it, it, it uploads them in number order if you number them. If you didn't number them, it's going to upload load them in the order that you have them. Now, they usually go in number order, alphabetical mm -hmm. order. So however you want to label them, if you want them in order, then put them in order before you go to those pictures. You can also click them and drag them. Around. Yeah, you can click them and drag them. I'll show you in the next in, in the next screen when I show you an actual listing that's live. Okay, so once you do that, you move to next. This is showing you what it's looking like right now, what everything looks like so far. Um, this is the partial listing. This is what the listing looks like. It, it'll have a, your feature picture right here, but we didn't put pictures in yet. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. When you get to that point, mm -hmm. you can click that email button, send it to your client, and have them double check everything. See, and I have them. I actually, I didn't. I've never done it at this point, and that's a great idea. I didn't so realize you could. I didn't realize you could send it mm -hmm. before live. So yeah, that um, is what I was actually mentioned that to me. That okay. I've never done that. Well, that's one of my steps at the end, but that's a good point. Is at the very end, I send it to them and to to review. But I didn't realize you could send it to them at this point. So send, you can send them the partial listing. So it's this email right here. Just, um, hit email. Show me what you just think about. Okay, I just, I'm showing you right now. Just hit email. Yeah, go to here. Go to this is a view detail report. See on the left. This is where we're at. So this is just showing me what you got so far. What you got so far, and this is your partial. That little button that says email. See right here. It says email. And let your client um, review it before you get any further. Thank you, Jennifer. That's a great point. Yeah, Josh actually knows some yeah. different So if, for those that, that didn't down. hear that part of it, Jennifer said, um, when you get to this part, it, even though it's a partial, you can send it to your client to review. You can only send it to them as a one page, customer one page. It's already featured right there, you see? Mm -hmm. And you just hit email. And then it's going to ask you for their email address. And then you can put a, whatever you want to say here. A lot of times I'll say link to listing and then I put the address so they know. And then you just click send and then it'll go to them. And they have to click on this link to see it. So thank you for that, Jennifer. Um, okay. So the next section, if we hit next, well, actually the next button is, oh yeah, it's, it wasn't green. But it, you can either do it over here on the left or the next button is either way. If you need to go to another location, if you want to go back to something, you can go back. You don't have to keep hitting the back. Yeah, so if you wanted to go back to the main list and you could go up here to scroll, looking for something. But we're at do adding documents. Everybody with me? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna add documents. So it's not letting me go to my Google Drive so I can show you exactly how to add a document. But what you do is you hit this add document button and you hit the plus. Same thing, you're gonna put a description. So you're gonna say property disclosure. And I'm, I'm, I'm gonna allow that to be emailed because somebody might wanna email that to their client. And then you would add, um, you would click on that to add a file. Let's see, this isn't letting me get into my computer. So you'd find it on your computer, click that, click open. And then it would be down here. Okay. So you could choose file right here, select a file. So right now it's saying no files have been chosen. But I'll show you in my next screen where I actually have one that's already attached. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you're welcome. And then just put the description of what it is. Um, you can add several. I don't even know if there's a limit here. You can add, you add the plat in this section, the property disclosure, the lead-based paint disclosure, any kind of HOAs. Mm -hmm. It's not a description. This is where we're adding documents for agents to see. So property disclosure, lead-based paint disclosure, mm -hmm. um, a plat, a map, HOA. HOA, covenants and restrictions. I actually have a 
pretty little map picture of the neighborhood. So I'm going to put that in there. And I'm actually, one of the things, um, this would be helpful. I think I, I'm putting it on my agent remarks, but just have to put it out there because I've been thinking about it. When you go to a neighborhood you don't know and it has amenities, it's really frustrating if you're with your client and you don't know how to get to the amenities, That's right? True. So I put the address of where the amenities were because so in the agent remarks, so that person might know, okay, hey, this is a big neighborhood and it's a fancy neighborhood and you don't want to be taking fancy people somewhere and you don't want to get to the amenities, no? So make sure they know in the agent remarks how to get to the amenities, you know? And there's something like great, like really nice upgrade. Mm -hmm. and you can either have them type up, like they've done a yeah. lot of work, you want them to type up and just upload a document that yeah. has all the upgrades. Right. Um, I'm showing a house tomorrow that has like $14,000 worth of wow. media upgrades. Yeah. And the listing agent actually attached the receipt so you can see every little thing. That's, that's nice. nice. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's and nice. I'm like, I'm like, I've already yeah. seen my client. I'm like, oh, this is a 14K worth of upgrades. Right. So they were able to see it. But since she was a great listing right. agent about putting that document in. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's true. I mean, and Jennifer had a good point. Just make a list of upgrades or 10 things I love about the neighborhood, 10 things I love about the house. I mean, just whatever you want to put in there. I don't think anything else that's like unique. Yeah. People put in. Yeah. Um, well, you were talking about your person that does measuring. Yeah. And then they'll draw out. Oh, yeah. The drawing. Yeah. yeah the drawing of the measurement of the um, square footage or plat. Yeah. Any of that goes there. So that's where the documents go. And the next section is if you're going to do an open house, you can come back to this later. You don't have to put this in at this point. Um, and you're lucky to have an open house if you, you know, hot minute in this market. Um, and this is about a tour. I don't really do anything at this point here with this. So pretty much we're, we are done. So at this point, when you're ready to go live, you're gonna hit save. I'm gonna hit it because I know there's a default, okay? And you're gonna see this. When you hit save, you don't hit save unless you're really gonna save, right? But I'm gonna show you, if you accidentally hit save and don't freak out because you're not going live, you have, there's a couple of things they're gonna ask you. One is, are you sure this is the listing date? Are you sure this is the listing expiration date? And you have to check the two boxes and then you are live. Or if you made any errors, it's gonna tell you, is this right? Is this wrong? Gives you, it's kind of a safety thing. This was the last book we were there. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, so. That's good, it's good. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. So, yeah. so like I'm gonna hit save, I'm gonna hit save. I'm not freaking out. And see, it gave me some, messages and that's exactly what it should be doing that's the okay. county format you have to be every i know yeah and the county format and the listing date is this correct listing date if it is you're going to check it if it the listing expiration you're going to check it and then the county um richland see these except except you would if those are correct you would check the box check the box mm -hmm. the richland county format is not followed. So what that's talking about is the tax map number right here, right here, the TMS, which is the tax map number. It's all together. They want it's this format. They want is that five dash two dash two. So they want a dash in between. Oh. So that's how they want the tax records, okay? Now, to go live, I would check these two boxes and hit save and it would be live. That's how, that's the end. I can't do that on this because I can't go live with it today, but that's where we go. I'm gonna go into my other listing super quick just to show you a couple of things about what we just talked about that I couldn't show you on here. Yes, sir. So at this point, um, when you're okay, so maybe let's say you have to go out and get tax information, whatever, you still would click um, the same partial to a same yeah. state until right. you're ready for right. So, so I'm here. I'm not going to hit save. I'm going to go back to save partial listing. That's right. Okay. And it's going to save this partial listing. So and I can even. Box box box. Okay. Yeah. Box box. yeah. As she's been ready and she has saved in that box, yeah. it will save 
you're listening to the say, here's your MLS number. Right. That's when it assigns an MLS. Yeah, this is where it will tell you it assigned an MLS number. So much. Yeah. No. Yeah. Right. So it's going to give you this box, just like Jennifer said, and it's going to say, "Congratulations, you're listed. Your listing number, your MLS listing number is this. Do you want to continue input? It's going to ask you that too. Or do you want to finish? I'm going to click finish, but because I'm going to show you on my other listing, just real quick, um, where you would go to um, to do two more things that we need to do. One of them is you need to assign it to Supra. A lot of people don't know that. So that your listing is linked to your law box. You have to do that. So I'm gonna hit finish. I'm gonna go to my other listing real quick and show you that. Okay, so, oh wait, I gotta do that. So when your listing is live, okay, it's gonna show like this, but it's gonna be, right here, it's gonna say active. I just went to pending because mine's under, mine's under contract right now. But it's gonna show all your listings here. You can do two ways to go to do additional things. You can hit this. Oh, that's why I think it's too big. Over on the far right, there's a select an action button right here on the end. Okay. So you click the select an action button, you can do all these different things from here. Okay. One is super lock box. So you want to assign your super lockbox to Supra. Otherwise, when somebody clicks your box and you didn't do that, it's not going to show what address it goes to. And if you have more than one listing, you're going to be like trying to figure, figure it all out. So you go there and you're going to assign up to this left. You can do some other things in here too. That's another class, but you just want to make sure you assign your lockbox. And then right here, it's just going to ask you your serial number, which is on your lockbox, and your shackle code, which is how you open the shackle on your, when you get your lockbox, you'll have a shackle code. Usually you make it your own, but it may come with one. You might have to change it to yours. But you just put in the key number here and save, and then you're good. So that's the super box done. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next step is, um, and I'm not going to go into detail because that's another class. This is where you set up your showing time. And so I have my person set up and showing. Oh, maybe because I'm not on my computer. But you would click this to go to set up your showing time and it would prompt you on the login. It should log you right into showing. And then I wanted to show you real quick the, um, you can get to your agent remarks in here. Um, didn't know if you can get in here to your pictures from there now. So I'm going to go in there real quick and just show you um, the, how the documents look when they're attached to your listing and how the pictures look. And then we should be done. If any, unless anybody has any questions, I'm just going to show you those two things. So this is a listing, it's live, it's actually pending right now, but um, the, it, you can always see the details. If you ever need to change anything, you can just go in here, change it and hit save. If your listing has an error in it or something, or you need to add something. Mm -hmm. This is also where you change your status. Mine's pending contingent inspections. Um, right, right. Yes. Oh. I'm glad you brought that up. One last point. One last point is after your uh, a listing is initiated and live, please print it and make a copy for compliance because that's part of your due diligence. So you print it and then what do you do? You upload it to command. Oh, okay. Yeah, 
because that you want you, they need your MLS listing print out. And our little thing that I didn't know I had to do until oh, they pay and pay the PLS. You have to give an instance why because the experts should make it. Oh, as soon oh, Kate, yeah, that's we need to have another class on KWLS. Yeah, because yeah, we need to get there's a KWLS um, through Keller Williams. We have our own system that connects with MLS, and sometimes there's conflicting information. We have to make sure that KWLS is accurate. Um, so we will have another class or more information on that. That's okay. So. This, what I did today is going to be live hopefully next uh, Wednesday. Okay. Who that? They talk about coach about that. To find out to make sure I have the kitchen in the U.S. is accurate. It's got to be right, right. Well, it's going to have a different expiration date. It's if you you should be fine for fourteen days. Fourteen days. Yeah. It'll be so fourteen days. She said. Yeah. Fourteen days. Yes. Jennifer said fourteen. Anyway, okay. Yeah. Now, now, now about it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, pictures. Okay. Here's the pictures. So, when when you load all the pictures at once, it comes here. You want to put descriptions. Remember how we said upload pictures? When you did them all, they all came here. All my pictures were here. All 36 of them. Well, actually, I only have 35. Um, but it went under contract in a couple hours. <laughs> Um, this is where you would put descriptions. See how I put little descriptions in the pictures? That's where you would put little descriptions. You click on the box and you can tell something about that picture. So that's where your pictures are. And your documents, they look like this. So those are all the documents I added. So if I wanted to add another document, I just hit plus, choose a file, describe it, and add it. And hit save. And that's how I got those here. Okay. Where do you get your document from the intake sheet? The input sheet? Yeah. That's part of our paperwork for the office. Oh, it's not, office. you don't get that in here. Yeah. It's in command. Oh, it's in command. It's in command. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So that's how you get that. This is what, um, if you look at the detailed report right here where it says view the detail report, this is what your live listing is going to look like. When you print out, like you probably look search for buyers, this is what your report's going to look like. Has all your information. Mm -hmm. So this is the page you want to print when it's it'll say active here, not pending. But you just go up here and you just hit print. Okay. Anybody have any other questions or any thoughts? Of course, not really. Okay. Well, hang on for one second because I know we're reading video in here. Um, I think that's all I got. Thank you guys for all coming. I know it's some of this is a little tedious, but hopefully you got some good information. Are there any I I thought you were we are talking about a zoom identity. Yep, I did that. Uh, any questions online? Yeah. There's put that orange box. Chat at the top. This one? Yeah, go all the way to the top. It says chat. Mm -hmm. See if they, they might see some questions in there. All yes, I just found that out. Oh, so, well. This is our lunch special. Oh, he was here. Um, it was really important today. Uh, going to the human work in 16 years, there were just as many times when um, there was a box or a line. And I'm working on exactly what to do to ensure right. of what to click or why or not to click it. And yes, you know. So some of that um, uh, tedious or, or time consuming may be more helpful. Yeah. We actually have a listing right. that you now on the title. Right now, know more confidently what is the answer. Right. Should go there. Right. Um, yes, you know. Right. Or is that a field that I could read? Or right. To come to right. Um, right. I think um, Jennifer had a question about how do you determine style? I think we answered that. If you don't know the style, maybe <laughs> just just ask around. If you don't know, ask the client if they don't know. 
Google it, like I said. I mean, just kind of look at different pictures of different styles. Pick each one, st each style that's on there, and Google that style and see what it looks like. It's well, like your house. Know. Yeah, that's why I said that if the seller doesn't know what the style is, then just take that style and put Google. What does that style look like? Or actually, if you go to Google Images and put that style in there, then it'll show you what that house looks like. So that's a thought. Anyway, all right, guys. Well, thanks again. I appreciate your time and um, listening you. and yeah, being participating. We all learned something today. Even I learned something today. Jennifer, <laughs> I didn't know you could send it as a partial to your client. So that's good good information. So. Yeah, and I did. And I just got to check that to see. I'm sure she can do this. But it's just that thing to work with. Yeah. Oh, great. Well, good work. I got some. All right.